yeah, just first of all, what, what's your reaction to the scale of this? Uh, no one I'm speaking to has ever seen anything like it, which really gels with what you know what you what you guys are saying there. It is the biggest uh, thing that we've seen, uh, and. I mean, if you look at the two companies that seem to be at the heart of it, it's no wonder why. We're looking at Microsoft and we're looking at CrowdStrike. Now, Microsoft, of course, everyone knows, uh, but in particular, we're looking at their cloud services here and, and we've increasingly come to rely on those services. Um, a large chunk of the world does. They're one of three major providers. And then you look at CrowdStrike. Uh, there's a cybersecurity company and they are relied upon by a large chunk of the world as well. Um, now, what we're still trying to untangle is how related those two problems are uh, and you know what the causal relationship is between the two, if there is one. Perhaps it was just a fluke and they're sort of feeding back into each other now. Um, that's something we're still, and everyone is still trying to work out. Um, so does it appear to have been an update that CrowdStrike was performing for Microsoft? Look, Microsoft's issues seemed to predate the CrowdStrike, uh, the, the CrowdStrike troubles. Uh, Microsoft started reporting issues uh, seven or eight o'clock this morning. East Australia um, time. Yeah, yeah East yeah. Australia time. Yeah. Um, and we've seen those issues play out around the world, as you've heard. Um, but the CrowdStrike issues did seem to appear later. Uh, it led some in the industry to believe that the CrowdStrike issue was downstream from Microsoft. Whether or not that's the case, really, um, we can't say at all now because we're starting to see some Microsoft services um, look, looking a little bit healthier. Um, and, you know, CrowdStrike, you know, it, we are still seeing, obviously, issues all over the place. So, um, yeah. And what some of our, our viewers might be struggling to reconcile and understand is how Crowd, CrowdStrike is taking everything out from self-checkout terminals to video cameras to smart devices to check-ins at airports. Mm. How is it doing that? Well, it's just that everyone relies on this one service. We are learning in this moment exactly how vulnerable we are uh, because we are... We, we are really uh, relying on this, this handful of large companies. And, you know, the cybersecurity space is more diversified than the, you know, cloud services sector. Uh, but clearly CrowdStrike has a large chunk of the market and that is why we're seeing this, this major impact. It's the Falcon update. Look, there is something really important that I wanted to put across at this point, though. So uh, I, was, I was speaking to an ethical hacker um, not long ago. Uh, What's an ethical hacker? <laughs> they do exist. Yeah, someone um, with good intentions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called white hat hackers and they're often out there doing what they call in the industry red teaming, basically going around and um, trying to find vulnerabilities in systems ahead of time and yeah. um, trying to prevent events like this from happening. Right. Um, but, you know, th they have essentially the same set of skills, but they're using them for good, if you will. Um, and what he said to me just now was, look, I attack for a living. And if I were a different kind of hacker right now, what I would be seeing is an opportunity. Mm. And his wow. advice was if you are a, an individual or an enterprise that does rely on CrowdStrike, don't disable it now. Uh, don't, you know, because I think a lot of people are looking for a short-term fix going, oh, well, I'll just, and there's all sorts of advice getting around on social media about here's how to fix it, here's this workaround. Um, his advice, at least, was uh, it, this is a short-term pain, but if you take away your security, particularly if you're a large organisation, you're potentially opening yourself up to um, a much longer-term uh, problem because, you know, there are people who will look at this moment and see nothing but open doors. Yeah, that's really important advice in mm. this situation. And that's, I guess, more primarily for business operators who have CrowdStrike as their that's security right. protection. Yeah. What about for regular people who might be coming across issues? What's your advice for them? I, look, I, I think the, the advice is the same. And unfortunately, um, you know, maybe we just sort of have to see this like a power outage, you know, the lights go out, we get the candles, maybe we just have to accept that, um, you know, there are going to be services that are offline for a little while and that's very difficult and that'll have major impacts for people, major ramifications, but, um, you know, trying to intervene, the message I'm, I'm seeing uh, here is that trying to intervene, um, but if you're not an expert especially, can be uh, a dangerous move. So and, just and, hands off? 
Well, the, the danger is for certainly... Now. I don't want to overstate the, no. the danger for, for individuals um, yeah. trying to sort of troubleshoot this at home. Yeah. It's, it's a global problem. I don't know how much luck you'll have. Um, but, you know, the, the advice for businesses, small, medium right. and large, mm. was really, uh, you know, think of the long-term health yeah. of your business.